I got onto the empty bus and inquired whether that was the route to get to the pet store. The driver nodded, and I sat down in the front seat, feeling chatty since it was Friday and I had the whole weekend ahead of me. The bus driver, Mark, <laughs> seemed to be glad to have somebody to drive around instead of that big empty bus. So soon we were in full-blown conversation that started with me talking about my special needs cat. <laughs> He's a cat who would surely be dead if he were left to his own devices in the wild. Um, I was on my way to the pet store to get his a special science diet cat food that um, prevents his penis from getting blocked so he can urinate and his bladder doesn't um, explode. <laughs> anyway, um, I observed that humans are distorting evolution by upsetting the natural selection with all of our precious pets. Mark agreed with me and said that we'd done it to ourselves. We'd even done it to humans. Um, we've fucked with evolution so much that we've evolved into creatures who are um, allergic to the planet. He spoke of his own allergies and asthma as an example. We shouldn't be allergic to cats or flowers, he said. We should be immune to the planet where we live. With all of our medical intervention, the physically weak human animals who would be dead long ago um, get to come along for this twisted evolutionary ride. Mark asked whether I was a student when he saw me jotting this statement down in my notebook. Actually, I said, I'm an atheist, <laughs> and I make video blogs on YouTube. Um, the word atheist seemed to prick his attention acutely. You realize that as an atheist, you are simply subscribing to a different set of beliefs, he said with some hesitation. Don't worry, I assured him. I'm not defensive about my position. In fact, I understand that the label atheist does imply that there are certain questions I don't really have to ask. I don't wonder whether I'm going to hell, and I don't have to ask how many angels sit on the head of a pin. The neat thing about my belief system is that my accepted facts are free for revision, as humans learn and observe more about the micro and macro of the universe, and my own life experiences further inform my understanding. This response seemed to take the sting out of the word atheism for him, and with a smile on his face, he repeated that an atheist belief system is one which revises itself. Um, we compared this to the evolution of Christianity, which seems to conform an interpretation of reality to fit a book, rather than to revise books to our growing understanding of reality. I suggested that a rule book which explains where everything came from and answers the question of every why makes life so much simpler. What's more, religion is a denial of death bolstered by a past and a present where huge numbers of people share the same fantasy. It's difficult for people to accept that each one of us, each person's own center of the universe, will one day just stop. I blurted out my story about having been in a coma for two weeks when I was 19. Obviously, I wasn't dead at the time but I have no recollection of it, and for all practical purposes, I wasn't there. Just like the time before I was born, being in a coma wasn't good or bad or scary. It was just fine. It just was. Having not been alive the majority of space-time already, I don't think that me not being alive again is going to matter much in the grand scheme of things. Being alive is cool, and I'm generally pleased, if overwhelmed, to be experiencing and reacting to the cosmos. Still, this is not something I would wish to do indefinitely. We are organic, changing animals. Even the most wonderful, exciting, profound experience will give us sensory fatigue after a while, don't you think? Um, if a roller coaster never came to an end, it would be called torture, not an amusement park ride. Stopping is good. So this is one of the reasons I don't want to have kids. Um, if I'd introduced another human being into the experience of experience, 
that would feel like starting something that would keep going um, indefinitely. Death only hurts the living, and therefore I would create another speck in the universe to feel pain when I go. I don't want to do that. As we neared the stop, the bus driver wondered aloud how I will feel when I'm 50. Mark appeared to be at least 50, and I wanted to ask him how he felt. I wish my ride had been longer. I'm really curious about whether death becomes scarier as one grows presumably closer to it, or whether, like the demonic shadows on a face seen in the dark, the projected spookiness can dissipate to reveal a very natural and familiar face. So, Dejemel5 left a comment under one of my videos. He said, it is difficult being an atheist while lying on your deathbed. I tried to find this person's profile so I could send him or her a PM. I would like to ask the general five what he or she is finding difficult about it. Um, it would be presumptuous to think that my worldview could comfort another person who is dying, but um, in leaving a comment like that, I figure that the general five is uh, reaching out to me in a sense. I'd like to help. I'm here. Theists and atheists alike, I would like to hear from you. I would like to hear from um, any YouTube elders. I would love to hear your perspective on death and um, afterlife or lack thereof. Does the notion of afterlife become increasingly appealing? Okay, um, thanks. Bye.